Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to be fixing this old regulator. If you're new here, welcome to the channel and don't forget to subscribe. This here. Okay, let's go potty. So when it came time to weld my truss on my axle, I was going to use my oxyacetylene torch to preheat the pumpkin. I pulled everything out, got it fired up, and the acetylene was lacking. I would light my torch and it would just kind of peter off. So I adjusted the regulator and nothing changed. So to verify that it was not working properly, I adjusted the regulator all the way down, tried it all the way out, tried it, and got the same result no matter what I did. Not only that, but once I turned off my gas supply, this gauge here climbed up, stopped, stayed there, and now it won't drop no matter what I do. Now in order to replace this regulator, I am definitely looking at a couple hundred dollars but why do that when I can repair it for a fraction of the cost? Now, yes, if I do replace it, I will be getting a brand new unit, but this old one here, they just don't make them like this anymore. Nothing is made how it used to be. There's a lot of plastic on the new ones. So I'm gonna do everything I can to keep this old regulator alive. And in order to do so, this is what I got. I was able to pick up a rebuild kit on Amazon for about $25 as well as I was able to pick up a low pressure gauge for about $10. So for $35 to $40, depending on shipping, I'm able to rebuild my regulator for a fraction of the price of a new one. I'll go ahead and leave links down in the description below for this gauge, as well as this rebuild kit, which is specific for the Harris Model 25 series, which is my regulator. Now, as I stated just a moment ago, this is a Harris model 25 series but the concept for repairing is pretty much the same for most regulators out there so first thing we're going to start by removing our adjusting t-handle here just going to back it all the way off until it pops out now something i like to do is set my parts in order of how they came out and also once i get things kind of out i like to leave them in an orientation that will help me remember how they came apart. The adjusting screw doesn't matter as much, but once I start pulling out the internals, I like to set them the way that they came out in the orientation that they came out. Now, next thing, we're gonna take off this outer piece here. This is all one unit, so if you put a wrench on here, it will actually spin this as well because it is all one piece. Now you can chuck this up in a vise if you have to. Make sure that you put like a rag in the vise or something before you set this down in there. That way you don't do any damage to your regulator. Now this is actually extremely concerning. I have no idea how it's possible that this much debris ended up inside my regulator over the years. Now this regulator was passed down to me, so who knows what could have happened in the meantime, but I know that my setup has never sat outside and this is obviously leaves in here. Also, it's supposed to be a sealed system and the only way that you can get debris in there is through this hole or through this hole here. So how is it possible that this much debris could have ended up in here? Maybe it's from bottles sitting outside and then when you screw the regulator on, you don't make sure that it's clean in there and it forces this through. I have no idea. All I know is this is never gonna happen again because I always store my equipment inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to clean all this up as well as clean inside the regulator itself. Not 100% sure how I want to do that just yet, but I do want to point out the parts and how they need to be orientated. So as this comes apart, this piece here will be separated from the rest of the unit. And there is this little gasket in here. This will be replaced. There's a new one inside of our kit. There's a spring here with this little hat on it. This hat sits with the dimple going into the spring. That way your adjusting screw will set in here nicely and that's how everything gets adjusted. This here is your diaphragm. There is also a new one of these inside the kit so this is going to be replaced as well. Now I see very little debris inside this chamber here so it almost makes me wonder if at some point 
somebody got mad at the previous owner and crammed it right down the hole on the regulator. I don't know, I'm just speculating, but these are obviously dried out leaves that have been crammed into the regulator. Now right now, I'm gonna go ahead and blow all this out with some air, and then we'll proceed to take this off here because there's a new piece that goes in there as well. All right, so now with the debris out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this here, and in my case, this is just a three quarter inch socket, and that should unscrew. Now once again, this here is also under tension, you don't want to lose any springs coming out, so just go ahead and slowly remove it once you reach a certain point. So now that this is removed, we're going to be replacing this inside piece here, and it should just pull straight out. Once this is out, you have this little centering piece here, as well as this needle here. It should just pull out. Now make sure you keep track of all these small parts because once they hit the garage floor, they are extremely hard to find. Now I'm going to go fix the TV for my boys real quick and I will get right back to this. Alright, so one TV fixed and a camera battery changed later. I'm hoping that it kind of lined up in the same spot because I had a hard time getting things adjusted again. That's okay, here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this spring out so they don't have any other pieces come out. Just set that right down in there and now I'm gonna go ahead and replace this gauge. Once again, I can chuck this up in the vise if I have to. If you don't have to, that's great. But especially at this point, if you have to chuck it up in the vise to remove your gauge, you wanna be extra, extra careful because you don't wanna mar up this surface here. Now that that's out, whenever I replace any gauges, I always like to do a quick dry fit before I put any sealant on my threads. I think that will work just fine. So now I'm gonna put a little bit of Teflon tape on these threads and get that tightened in there. We'll get that spun on there a little ways and we'll get her tightened down. All right, so we got her on there. It's a little crooked. That's okay, it can be crooked. So we got it on there. We can chuck this one. God, those boys are wild. All right, so we can chuck this one and now it's time to open up our parts kit. So this here is our parts kit. Inside it, we're gonna have our new diaphragm, which is to replace that there. We're gonna have our new washer, which is to replace that. And then we've got this piece here, which is to replace that. So first things first, we need to take and put our needle back in our little hole right here. And it should move pretty freely. If it does not, there is something wrong with your needle or your new parts. And then we're going to go ahead and slide on our little sleeve. Don't forget your spring needs to go back down in. And then we can proceed to set that down on in and now replace that piece there. Make sure you get that screwed down in there good and tight. Good and tight. Next thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you get this piece here and insert your new little gasket here. And then we want to install this spring. We're just gonna drop our hat down in there. Make sure that the protruding dimple is pointed towards the spring. And then we can go ahead and drop our spring down in there. And then we wanna make sure that we install our new diaphragm in the correct orientation. And the correct orientation, this one here is marked up, but you wanna make sure that you put it in the same way that it kinda came out. So you've got this larger metal piece here, and you've got this smaller disc on the back here. So the smaller disc goes towards the needle, the larger disc goes towards the adjuster. And we can just set this down in here carefully and make sure that you push it down past all of the threads where it sits nicely inside. 
Now that we've gotten this far, we can go ahead and reinstall this onto the regulator. Now, in an effort to keep the diaphragm from sliding under the weight of the spring, I always like to install the regulator onto the cap as opposed to the cap onto the regulator. And by that, I mean, I just like to come up, set the regulator over the top, and then screw things on from the bottom. Just like that. Now the final step in the process is just to reinstall our adjusting screw. And then it's time to take this over to the vise so I can finish tightening down this here. And then it's officially time to test it. All right, so let's turn this on. We've got pressure. We've got pressure. Let's make an adjustment here. And look at that. It moves, she's alive. And we have flow, look at that. Now let's turn this off. And no drops in pressure, which means no leaks. Sweet. There it is, she works great. And now I can return my dad's regulator that I had to borrow. Hopefully you liked this video and you found it helpful. If you did, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. It is a free way to support this channel. You can find me on Instagram at It's Project Venture as well as the Tickety Talk at It's Project Venture. Now I know this is different than my usual Jeep videos, but this is something I had to do and I thought it might be helpful for some of you guys. Thanks for watching. What did he do? Beep boops.